Paulin and I'm delighted to be guest hosting Virus Watch this week. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the beneficial uses of viruses. In recent months we've been hearing a lot about viruses like Zika, polio and yellow fever causing disease outbreaks. So I thought I would discuss how we can actually exploit viruses and use them as therapeutic agents, in particular for treating various types of cancer. So the idea that viruses could possibly be used to treat cancer was actually reported as far back as the early 1900s, when tumour regression was observed in cancer patients who became ill with viral infections. So extensive research carried out throughout the 20th century uncovered many of the molecular differences between tumour cells and normal healthy cells. And we now know that tumours have numerous defective cell signalling pathways. For example, the dysregulation or complete loss of important proteins called tumour suppressor proteins allows the tumour cell to avoid cell death or apoptosis. And by preventing apoptosis, which is the process of programmed cell death or cell suicide, tumour cells can then divide and divide indefinitely in an uncontrolled manner. So evasion of the process of apoptosis and this unlimited cell division, these are two of the six defining hallmarks of cancer. So how can better understanding of the molecular pathways involved in cancer development or oncogenesis help us to develop viruses as anti-cancer therapeutic agents? Well, advances in DNA cloning techniques in the 1970s allowed scientists to identify precise interactions between viral and cellular host proteins which were responsible for permitting viral replication. So by exploiting this knowledge that cell signaling or antiviral pathways are often disrupted in tumour cells but not in normal cells, scientists found that they could limit viral replication to tumour cells through engineering specific changes into specific viral proteins. So this discovery allows scientists to engineer viruses to selectively replicate or lyse and kill cancer cells but not normal cells. And an added bonus to this is that when these viruses replicate in the tumour, they release new infectious viral particles from the dying tumour cells. And these spread to neighbouring tumour cells and so on and so on and continue spreading until the tumour is destroyed. This process is called oncolysis. And any engineered virus which is capable of oncolysis is called an oncolytic virus or an oncolytic vector. So why viruses? What is it about viruses that make them such an attractive choice for a cancer therapy? Well, viruses themselves are natural delivery vehicles and they've evolved over millions of years to successfully deliver their nucleic acid genomes into cells. So although the idea to hijack viruses and force them to deliver therapeutic packages such as anti-cancer drugs might sound a little like science fiction, Scientists can actually do this relatively easy by genetically engineering and mutating viruses. So scientists have made huge advances in this type of research over the past two decades and there are now numerous clinical trials being carried out worldwide to test oncolytic viruses in cancer patients. The families of viruses that are chosen as oncolytic viruses are really well studied. They normally cause very mild illness in humans and they can tolerate the insertion of large chunks of genetic material. So for example, viruses that are commonly used for this purpose include adenoviruses, pox viruses, and herpes viruses. But it's important to remember that lots of other viruses are now undergoing investigation as oncolytic vectors. So to make the ultimate oncolytic virus for cancer therapy, we need to consider combining and optimizing several different engineering approaches so that we make the therapy as selective as possible for tumour cells. The main strategies for doing this, for engineering viruses, are one, transductional retargeting, two, replication selectivity, and three, by arming the virus. So I'm gonna explain a little more about each of these approaches in detail. So transductional retargeting refers to the introduction of mutations or changes in a virus which make it target a specific cell type, in this case, a tumor cell. So proteins on the outer virus surface, they recognize specific receptors on the surface of host cells. 
and different types of viruses will have a preference for the receptors that are found on the cell surface of specific tissues or specific organs. And this recognition is referred to the tropism of the virus. So depending on the origin of the cancer that we're trying to target, for example, if we're trying to target lung cancer, breast cancer, we will modify the oncolytic virus so that it now has a tropism for that specific cell type and not for normal cells. So there are several clever engineering strategies to alter or swap the outer structural proteins between different families of viruses. Swapping structural proteins is called pseudotyping. Alternatively, we can engineer in small protein sequences called peptides, which interact with known receptors on the surface of cancer cells. We can simultaneously then introduce mutations which would eliminate any background interactions with receptors that are found on normal cells. Therefore, when these oncolytic vectors are injected into the bloodstream, they have the potential to seek out tumour cells or disseminated metastases which display this target receptor but we don't waste any of the therapeutic dose as a result of uptake in normal healthy cells. Another level of safety when making an oncolytic virus is to make it replication selective and as I explained previously improved understanding of the interactions between viral and host cell proteins help us to engineer mutations or make deletions in the viral genome which make these virus-host interactions redundant in tumour cells. So we can also engineer oncolytic viruses so that their ability to replicate is under the control of molecules which are found in high abundance in tumour cells but are not found in normal cells. An example of this is the cyclooxygenase 2 enzyme or commonly known as COX2 which is overexpressed and found in really high levels in numerous tumour types. So insertion of the COX2 promoter into the viral genome makes sure the viral replication will only take place in cells where there are high levels of this COX2 enzyme. And again, this means that viral replication can only proceed in tumour cells, but it's restricted in healthy cells. So several other cancer selective pro promoters can be used and these can be customized for the tissue type that the tumor originated from, for example, prostate cancer or breast cancer or whichever tumor type you want to target replication to. Finally, we also want to arm the virus. That means we want to add in therapeutic molecules which will help the oncolytic virus to destroy the tumor. And there are a couple of ways we can do this. So for example, one therapeutic transgene could be thymidine kinase from herpes simplex virus. And this enzyme converts the drug ganciclovir into a toxic product which results in cell death. Alternatively, we can insert molecules which cut off the blood supply of the tumor. Or you can even reintroduce the tumor suppressor proteins which are required for apoptotic cell death, which I mentioned are often lost in tumor cells. Another popular approach to arm the oncolytic virus is to produce proteins which signal to the immune system to mount an attack on the tumour. And this strategy has been really successful. And the exciting news is that recently both the FDA and European regulatory authorities approved the clinical use of a, an oncolytic herpes virus expressing GMCSF. So this virus, known as TVEC, it's attenuated by deleting several viral genes. And TVEC has been effective in several cancer types, but in particular, it's been very effective for melanoma. So you get localized expression of this GMCSF following direct injection into the melanoma lesions. And this results in the recruitment and activation of antigen presenting cells, which trigger tumor specific T cell responses. TVEC is the first oncolytic immunotherapy to demonstrate a therapeutic benefit against melanoma in a phase three trial. It was also really well tolerated in patients and was associated with higher durable response rates and improved survival in cancer patients. So these are really exciting times for viral gene therapy for cancer. And these studies will no doubt pave the way for similar oncolytic vectors gaining clinical approval. I really hope I've convinced you that viruses are not all bad and thank you so much for watching Virus Watch this week. Mm -hmm.